guys welcome back to my channel diamond painting with anxiety I'm Karen I'm really glad to stop by so I was challenged by Nana of seven crafts to participate in a seven day challenge where we're gonna put up videos once a day for seven days I'm really excited about doing that because <clears throat> for whatever reason in the last I think three or four days I've been putting up a video every day of one type or another. I don't know that I would want to do a video every day, you know, ongoing. But I think right now I've got to really light a fire under myself and challenge myself and push through my disbelief that I can, you know, put out even three or four videos a week. I have a tendency to think that I'm just too busy, I don't have time, I'm too disorganized or whatever. And I don't think that's necessarily positive or healthy in my life. So I'm really excited about doing this challenge. One of the other things I'm really focused on right now is doing um, finishes in February. So all the projects that I have laying around that are, you know, not framed, need to be sealed, need a few more diamonds replaced because they fell off, whatever. Um, I'm really focused this month on trying to get those just done and out of my energy field. So for my first, um, actually, I misspoke. I think this is going to be my second um, uh, video because if I, I have a sh special shipment that's coming today, and if it comes, that will be my first video for the seven-day challenge. This will probably likely be the second. But... Um, Without further ado, let's get busy and finish this project. So, do you guys remember Tom Turkey? That's what I affectionately call him. Ooh, look at him. I was working on him, of course, before Thanksgiving, um, intending to get him finished and, um, you know, done to, to be part of the Thanksgiving decor here at the shelter. Um, I bought a blow up yard lawn a blow up lawn ornament that is the same character so I was really excited about that unfortunately he just didn't get completely finished so I am going to finish him now and I'm going to get him him all in his permanent framing and get him put in the um the uh, holiday storage that we have here at the shelter so as far as this painting goes, I'll link everything in the comment uh, section below, or the description box, I mean. But this project was really fun. Um, the drills didn't pop. There's a little bit of gapping, but, you know, for what it is, a uh, holiday decor piece, I don't really mind too much. Um, had a little bit of confetti, but it wasn't too bad. Right towards the end, or actually it wasn't towards the end, but towards the end when I put this piece away, um, I had created a lot of confetti for myself. So I had, you know, drills everywhere that needed to be filled in. So I spent this morning doing that. Now, because of the particular framing technique I'm going to use for this piece, I'm going to need to seal him. So I thought we would just do that together. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the way I seal my diamond paintings. So I use either super cheap, um, clear Elmer's um, school glue or Mod Podge to seal my diamond paintings. Um, this time I happen to be using Mod Podge. Um, before I seal this, I do want to, if I can find my roller, uh, Hang on, just one second. I gotta stand up here for a minute. There we go, so I can reach. Okay, excuse my dirty sweatshirt. It's raining here in sunny California today, and I just needed an old work stand-up work shirt to feel warm. Plus, working on messy, messier projects like this, it's not a bad thing. So um, I'm not hearing any popping drills. Like I said, there's some gapping. That's probably why. I've already wiped this down with baby wipes. I do that with all of my pieces when I'm finished. Um, yeah, no popping drills whatsoever. Yeah, this was a pretty good quality canvas. Oh, I was going to show you 
Um, I had drills left over in every single color. It's hard to see in that. I don't even know why I'm bothering. I'll just tell you, I had, I did have drills left over. Okay, so as far as like sealing a painting, how I do it is whether I'm using the clear Elmer school glue or the Mod Podge, I water it down. I water it down by about 50%. Um, as you can see, I don't know, maybe you can tell, it's pretty thin. I mean, it's, it's, it's thin. It's like drippy thin. Um, to seal these paintings, it, you know, it doesn't need to be really super thick. I use the flat Mod Podge um, brush. I just picked this up at Joanne's Fabrics. I'm sure you could get it at Michael's, you know, whatever craft store is near you. So I thin this down a lot. I store it in a container like this with a lid so that, you know, I can save it from project to project. And then, you know, I mean, it's not really rocket scientist or rocket scientist rocket science i just brush it on um because it's mod podge which that's one thing that i do like about using the mod podge instead of the um clear glue is it it does go on white so i'm kind of able to see if i'm getting it even or not when i'm doing this first coat all the coats actually so I just go ahead and I just brush that on it's thin so it's you know it's super easy to work with oh I feel like that drills popped up a little bit okay yeah so you know I mean I just brush this stuff on like I said, because of the particular framing that I'm going to be doing for this piece, which is kind of um, a frugal, creative solution to being able to frame something like this, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to have to do to this, this painting before we get it into its frame. But, um, you know, that's for me... I put off doing things like this because diamond painting, let's face it, is my favorite part. You know, actually dropping the diamonds, hopefully on the canvas and not on my floor. But that's the part that I really like to do. So I procrastinate sometimes with my finishes. It depends on, you know, how anxious I am to get it to wherever it's going to be going or, you know, what the, what the situation is. And like for something like this, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but once I have missed some kind of deadline, even if it's a self-imposed deadline, and of course the deadline on this was to get it finished and hung up here at the house before Thanksgiving, but once I've missed that deadline, I don't know, it's like I just lose interest. So that's one of the reasons why I got so many things sitting around here that now need to be finished. So I'm going to really try to focus on that. Um, probably will do, I don't know if I'll do videos where I'm finishing them all on camera, but at least doing videos with the, um, the final results. So this will be finish number one for February. So that's super exciting, especially because this is one of the projects that's going to, like I said, it, there's probably going to be a couple of things I need to do to this before it can be totally finished. Um, so it's good to be kind of getting this one knocked out. I feel good about that. So then after I get this done, because it's so thin, it's got a pretty forgiving dry time. So I will go over it one more time and just kind of, I go from both directions, just try to make sure this is even as possible. And then that's it. Um, when it's time for this, or while it's, you know, during the drying time, that's what I'm trying to say. 
Um, I put this actually in my shower. Um, I put it on the shower floor that way, you know, I'm not like close the door that way. I'm not messing around or anything. Um, and it's going to stay nice and flat and it's, you know, hopefully going to dry well. So that's kind of weird. I feel like I'm seeing some like rivets or something for, or not rivets, but like, um, puckers or something forming down there. Huh. Never had that happen before. What's the back of this canvas look like? Not too bad. I don't know. Hopefully it'll be okay. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. And um, I usually do two to sometimes three coats. If the drills are popping, I might do three. I'll see how this one looks. If I do need to do a third coat on this one, um, I'll do that off camera and, um, you know, just come back and show you guys the results. So, um, I will see you guys soon. Okay, we are back and he has been sealed and he has been dried. One thing I can say about sealing in this method is it, because I use such thin glue, it adds kind of a shine but, I mean, I think it's still got quite a bit of sparkle. So, I mean, for what this, again, for what this is, which is a, a holiday decoration, I think it's fine. I mean, I like it. So, he's all sealed. He's all dried. While I was gone, I did um, trim the, um, the border off, the edges. Um, so, now we can get ready to frame him. So, what are we going to frame this guy in? So I like to be super creative and frugal in my framing. So there's a, a store that I like to go to. It's called the 99 cent store. This is very beat up. I apologize. Um, kind of ripped, but that's okay. Um, it wasn't ripped when I bought it, but I don't know, in my car or whatever. So there's a store here called the 99 cent store. Not everything is 99 cents, but, but all the prices end in three ninety nine or 99 um, you can buy a lot of stuff there for a dollar, which is really cool. This particular frame, and actually it's not a frame. It's a, see it says right there, it's a magnetic board. Well, that's really awesome. For $3.99, that's a good deal. It comes with little magnets, um, really cute piece. Um, but I need a frame for my diamond painting, so I'm going to use this. Because it is, oh, and it's hard to see, but I paid, it's ripped. I paid $3.99 for this, okay? $3.99. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. All right, so now we've got it open. Oh, it's a little bit loose there. I may, may have to repair that, maybe a little bit of glue or something. Hey, you know, it's $3.99. I can do a little bit of repair. I don't mind. Um, so this is, you know, this is a perfectly acceptable frame. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to pop him in. One thing that, oh, and there it goes. It's going to come apart right in that edge. One thing that I did notice, I'm going to, Hang on, I'm gonna do a repair on this right now. Just so that I can work with this without it being a big, huge problem. So, quick repair until I have some time to dab some glue on that. I'm just gonna tape this right here. Again, this may have not even been damaged at the store. It may have been damaged. I may have damaged it myself, you know, just bringing it home in my car. It's been sitting over there for a while. So, okay, I hopefully that'll hold that together so I can work with this a little easier. Okay, so one of the things that is going to be an issue is this is just a little bit too wide to pop into this frame. So what to do, what to do. Okay, guys, hang on to your hats. I'm going to trim this diamond painting. 
yes, I spent all the time to put the, the diamonds down and I enjoyed every second of it, but it's a diamond painting. I want to frame it, this particular piece. If I have to use lose a few diamonds, it's not really going to matter. It's going to be fine. Hang on, my light pad's on and it's distracting me. Hello. I'm going to edit that out. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, so there, you know, I'm going to need to trim it and it's going to be fine. It looks to me like I would need to trim probably about four rows, maybe five, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess four on the side and maybe four, uh, maybe even two from the top. So we're going to, we're going to try that. Okay. So we're going to start by going two diamonds in on this side with some really sharp scissors. And I'm just going to trim those off. They're super easy to cut between. Um, you can obviously kind of see where the line is. If you run into a diamond that's a little bit out of place, these diamonds are actually easy to just snap right through with a pair of sharp scissors. So there we go. Two, two rows of diamonds off. I'm going to check it. Um, that looks about perfect. Okay. So now... I think I'm going to be safe and try doing two right here at the top or even just for fun maybe I'll try and keep it even I'll do one at the top and one at the bottom I can always go through another row take another row off from either the top or the bottom if it's not going to fit super easy and super worth doing to have this nicely framed, even if it's in a $3.99 frame, that I'm going to have to dab a little bit of glue in the corner. So let's try that. Mm, still a little bit more. I'm thinking maybe even two more rows. So, oh, I only took one off. I need to take one off the bottom. Let's try that. Better safe than sorry. I don't want a gap if I can avoid it. If I did end up with a gap, I would probably choose to go a bit wider and have a, you know, a little bit of a gap all the way around just so it looks uniform. But we can get really creative with this stuff. I mean, I used to be so intimidated by framing and then eventually I kind of realized Okay, yep, we're still just, I think I need maybe one or two more rows off this. Ooh, I kind of got it stuck now. Okay, let's try one more row up here at the top. And that is absolutely perfect. Fits absolutely perfect inside this frame. Okay, so now I'm going to pause again. I'm going to go outside and use some spray adhesive on the back of this painting and on the back of this frame, or the inside part of this frame. And a um, little bit of movie magic, and I will be right back with you. Hang tight. Okay, we're back. I have sprayed my frame. You can see I went a little heavier around the edges. This is material, so it kind of absorbed it in some places. But let me tell you, this is nice and tacky. 
This is the type of adhesive I use. Let me move my finger so you can see. I like this because it's repositional, repositionable. On some pieces, that's important. This one, it won't be quite so much because it's going to fit absolutely tight. I've sprayed the back of this pretty heavy. Because this, you know, it tacks up really good, it gives you, you know, a little bit of time to work with things and move them around if you need to. Now I do, oh, I guess I don't need to check because the, the writing is this way. I automatically know that I've got this one, uh, you know, in the right direction so that I'll be able to hang it. And all I need to do is to pop this in there. Okay, it's a little bit, okay, like I said, this should be repositionable. So I've got a little, I've got it a little bit gapped over here, or not gapped, um, overlapped, I guess is what I wanna say. Okay, now I'm nervous. Hang on, tweezers to the rescue. I just gotta pry this up. Yeah, it's tacking up real good, but I am able to move it just a little bit. That's a good thing for you to have, you know, some, some time to be able to work with it and adjust things. So I'm going to pull it over this way a little bit more. Put that down. There, that's fitting a whole lot better. Okay, and then just because I want to make sure that this is, you know, seated really good on here, really you know, attached everywhere. Again, I'm gonna pull out my roller and I'm just gonna roll over this. And there we have it. Tom Turkey is framed. Yay! This is going to be so cute. So for $3.99, little bit of glue, very little time. You know, I did seal the diamond painting because it's it obviously doesn't have glass. We took a magnetic board and turned it into a wonderful framing option. I will need to um, place a little bit of glue right down here in this corner to hold this frame together. But you know, for $3.99, I think I can do that. Um, this is gonna be a wonderful holiday addition to our decor here at the house um, that the kids are gonna love for years to come. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. What do you guys think? Be sure to tell me in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching, for supporting my channel. And remember, we can change lives one drill at a time, even if it's just our own. Because if our lives are better, the entire world's going to be better. So thanks for watching, you guys. See you soon.